you get as an option or somebody has got a, a piece of water pipe uh, <laughs> cut and clamped on there because bumpers, as we said a few minutes ago, were optional yeah. uh, back in that period. Right. A Ken Hay collection. Yes, picture. indeed. A classic, we might add. Yep. Now, we'll change our uh, view here a little bit. And what do we have coming up next? Well, this is kind of interesting because it brings us back for a minute to the uh, construction of 128, which we covered in, a, in an earlier program. And uh, we wanted to put this in here because it shows uh, construction equipment uh, of the period around uh, just after World War II. And we're looking approximately uh, east of Route 1A, which of course is Dodge Street, uh, where 128 crosses over it. And we're looking uh, pretty much right toward where we're sitting now uh, in, in that area. Um, Tozier Road. Tozier Road, what, what is today Tozier Road, uh, would be in the background here. And uh, we have one of, of the M. DiMatteo company, uh, big flatbed trailer trucks uh, lugging a, looks like a road grader. And uh, in the background is a, a World War II ex-Army truck, a deuce and a half, uh, which were apparently uh, common surplus items after the war, and these contractors must have picked them up for 10 cents on the dollar. Mm. This picture is dated 1945, 6, 46, mm -hmm. in that era. In that period, that's yeah. right, just after the war. Yeah. Well, uh, it's uh, rather hard to believe, especially if you're a North Beverly native, I suppose, but we're coming up on the 50th anniversary of Route 128 up there. That's right. 50 years. That's right. Indeed we are. It doesn't mm. seem possible. It does not indeed. Okay, and this is from the Carlin Collection. Yes. Any, any background information on mm, that? No, not Carlin really. That family? was uh, uh, several pictures that were dropped off without too much fanfare at the Society one day, but uh, we're happy to have them. Sure. And yet another Carlin uh, photograph, mm -hmm. which uh, this contraption looks uh, right, out, right out of the comic strips here. Yeah, well, you talk about Rube Goldberg. <laughs> um, actually, it's a pretty commonplace bulldozer of the period uh, sure. World War II, and you would have seen uh, machines like this certainly in the CBs and, and the Army construction battalions during World War II. So it's not unusual in that respect. It's unusual because today, of course, all your bulldozers have the plow and whatever uh, activated by hydraulic uh, pistons. Yeah. And this one is, is activated by a system of pulleys and cables, yeah. uh, which go up and actually over the top of the, of the bulldozer cab and down the back to the, to the uh, power takeoff, which was located behind the driver's seat. And that's what made the plow go up and down. Glide's greenhouse is just barely visible. That's correct, room. just to the left behind the bulldozer. You can just see part of one of the greenhouses. And again, this is in the area about where uh, uh, Barbara's hang-up is today. And uh, that house that you see in the background uh, uh, was moved uh, when this uh, whole business was put through here, when 128 was constructed. Yeah. And of course, the greenhouses were demolished. Yes. Yeah. Just so much change up there mm -hmm. at, in a rapid period of time. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Within a few, few years. It within went, five years, really, yeah. yeah, from 1945 to 1950. And then, of course, hard on, on the heels of 128, you had the, uh, the tremendous changes that were uh, wrought by the uh, Smithson construction of all those little Cape Cod houses yeah. throughout uh, the Chipman Road area on Old Farm, Priscilla sure. Road, Douglas Avenue, yeah. MacArthur Road that entire area, which were all greenhouses and farmland, and that all vanished within a period of 10 years. Uh, amazing. Yes. Pond Hill coming up. Mm-hmm. This is something that, that kind of complements our earlier ice pictures where you had the, uh, the shots of the horses and, and the men with their hand saws that we showed on another program. And this was in the 1930s, which was about the end of the uh, the years of cutting natural uh, pond and lake ice because by this point in time uh, electric refrigeration was coming in so people didn't have a need for ice in their in their quote ice box right <clears throat> so we've got at the very end of the ice era here uh, finally the the ice cutting has been mechanized state uh, of the art state of the art oh yes that's a good term for this uh, looks like a little four cylinder maybe a model a or a model t uh, gasoline engine on some kind of a skid device, yeah. uh, running a buzz saw blade out at the end here, yeah. and uh, using that to actually cut these big blocks of ice, yeah. uh, which will then, of course, be moved and, and brought up on conveyors uh, in the background there that right. you can see. And we're looking from Wenham up onto Pond Hill and into North it Beverly. would seem to be, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Now, here we are with 
what was to be one of the very first trolley cars, I'm sure, that came through these parts. Mm -hmm. And this picture was taken in Beverly. We're not sure where. We doubt that it's North Beverly because we haven't been lucky enough to find a, a streetcar picture, a good streetcar picture in North Beverly. But this was typical of what came through all of Beverly. And this would be around the turn of the century, not long into the electric car era. And it's a, a classic view of, of the front end of one of these open vestibule electric streetcars. And you see the conductor and the motorman uh, right here on the front platform. And the motorman uh, has his controller handle on his left hand, and he's got the brake handle in his right hand. And with those two uh, control handles, he uh, controlled the speed and, and the braking capacity of the car. Uh, the other interesting thing is that diagonal lever that runs down to the, uh, toward the ground, and that was a device for actually turning switches in the track when they would get to a, a turnout and they wanted to go down the siding. This lever would actually reach down into a hole and pull the, the switch points over so the car could then travel around and go down the other side instead of down the main track. Yeah. You and I talked about this picture. Uh, prior to the taping, neither one of us could figure out why they didn't have some kind of a protective curtain at least there to help these poor fellows out. Oh yeah, because in the winter this was a rough, rough job. I mean, you can imagine bucketing along on this thing out in a, in a day like, well, like today, the sure. day we're taping this with blowing snow yep. and uh, ice and sleet. Yep. And I know we've got pictures that I've seen uh, showing these uh, motormen all dressed up in big bearskin coats and icicles all over their <laughs> mustaches <laughs> and right beards down. and oh, yeah. terrible. This fellow looks like a hearty soul here with you a mustache to be. there. You right. to be. He's looks certainly rugged enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is a classic picture, Rich. That Some, is. Somewhere in Beverly. Yep. Okay. Next, we get into the type of uh, vehicle here that uh, I think uh, most of the uh, older folks would remember here in Beverly. Yeah, this is your basic uh, closed vestibule streetcar, and as opposed to what we were just looking at with the open vestibules, this car at least offered protection for the motorman. He now had his own little enclosed space uh, at the end of the car, so he was now finally protected from, from the elements. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, again, is, is typical of streetcars that came through Beverly. Uh, Turn of the century up until, say, World War I uh, yeah. era. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not, again, North Beverly. It's actually a builder's photograph of this type of streetcar. Surely. When we say come through Beverly or came through Beverly, mm -hmm. we're, we're talking really in terms of, of all of the streetcars, trolley cars coming together, merging down around the Ellis Square area, but coming from three, two or three different directions. Sure, because you had cars coming in from Salem. Uh, you had cars coming from Danvers. You had cars coming from uh, North Beverly, Hamilton, Wenham, mm. and as far away at one point as, uh, as Essex, because you had the line that went to Essex that branched off at Ellis Square. Right, right there in the square, you That's could right. go to the it right went and, down and go up to Essex. Essex Street. Essex Street. That's and right. Head on, straight on, would take you yep. up through North Beverly and into Hamilton, Wenham, Hamilton, and that That's direction. correct. Yep. That's correct. Yep. Uh, where I live on Pond Street, one of the one of my neighbors pointed out that the trolley tracks came right up Pond Street. That's correct, and they turned and they came out at uh, Brown's Bicycle Shop onto Cabot Street. Mm -hmm. And when you look back at that now, you know that, that there's quite a hill on Pond Street. Sure is. And these cars must have had to get a heck of a, of a run to get up that hill in the winter. Yeah. This, I note, comes from the Walker Transportation Collection. And in our next program, when we get into trolley cars uh, on a serious note, uh, we'll talk more about the Walker yes. collection. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wonderful collection of pictures. Now, I'm sure our viewers uh, will look fondly upon this picture. Yes, and they'll also say, gee, we're not in North Beverly anymore. That's, that's sort of like Dorothy said, we're not in Kansas anymore. No, we're downtown, folks. Um, as Ted just mentioned, uh, these pictures come from the Walker collection, and, and this is going to be sort of a transition. And we're going to go to uh, some of the pictures from the Walker collection in another broadcast. Okay. All right. Uh, we're, uh, we're, we're getting along here really okay. in, in our time, Rich. So this is a wonderful uh, picture here of uh, the old uh, First National Bank. The old Bank. National Bank before it burned, yep. yep. And uh, traces of Cabot Street with the tracks. And mm -hmm. just as we were saying a minute ago, there go the tracks. You can see in the foreground the tracks running down toward Essex on the Essex Street side, although I believe at this point that had already been done away with and they were running buses down there. Yep. Okay. Next, uh, almost just uh, turning the camera around, so to speak, mm -hmm. and looking uh, at, at Cabot Street, same place from yep. the other side of the street. Yep. 
and the YMCA and, and the rest of it, the Catholic Church. And if you took that streetcar and those automobiles and the cobblestones out of there, it would look just like it looks today. I knew it. I mean, really, those buildings haven't changed at I all. It. I knew it. Look at those cobblestones. Wasn't that Imagine a work of Imagine driving on those. Yeah. You remember driving on cobblestone sure. roads? I remember. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But to put them in there, what a, what right. a, a massive amount of work well, it yeah, was. Lots to. of cheap labor. Yeah. Right. You must never forget that. Right. Now this, this last picture that we have here is a real classic, Rich. Mm -hmm. and, uh, tell us about it. Anyway. Well, this, we're very lucky to have this picture. And again, this is from the Walker Transportation Collection. And it shows the last streetcar, the last electric streetcar coming through Beverly, headed towards Salem uh, back in uh, February 1937, February 28th to be exact. And this is about midnight, and it's right at Ellis Square. The YMCA is, is in the background on the right-hand side. And, and fortunately, there was a news photographer with his big press camera and his flash bulb, and he caught this moment for all time. Uh -huh. February 28, 1937. Mm -hmm. Here's the article here, uh, as it was reprinted in the Beverly Times in, uh, back in 1977, written by Lester Levy. Uh, and it goes, only yesterday, the old a trolley car went on its final ride. Uh, there weren't any plans for a party to mark the occasion, but by midnight, February 28, 1937, 1,000 persons had jammed Ellis Square. The festivities had begun at 11.55 at Gloucester Crossing amid cheers and the popping of firecrackers. As the sounds of frivolity reached the people awaiting in the square, car horns added to the din, and everyone joined in the fun. Then out of the darkness of Cabot Street came a single flickering light surrounded by a sea of people. The last electric streetcar was making its final run from Beverly to Salem. The car slowly inched its way along Cabot Street with its pipey bell and sickly whistle announcing its journey. Jerry King, the regular operator of the car, had given up the controls for this historic trip to Charles McCormick, manager of the Salem District of the Eastern Massachusetts Railway Company. Uh, as the uh, car uh, rounded the curve on Cabot Street and came clanking into Ellis Square, flash bulbs blinked out of the darkness and the cheering crowd surged forward to surround the car. Inside the orange and black trolley were the 60 people who'd managed to squeeze their way on at Gloucester Crossing for this last trip. Jammed in among the passengers were Norman Knowlton and Florence Butcher, along with John Rogers. Jack Lyons, Edward Foley, and Henry Gaudreau and also inside were Edith Oconee, Philip Cashman, and Philip Olson, enjoying the holiday spirit that engulfed everyone. For 40 years, the electric streetcars had been a common sight in Beverly as they made their routine stops along Rantoul Street on their way to Gloucester Crossing. At the end of the line, the seats were reversed and the car started on its journey once more, this time down Cabot Street and then over the bridge into Salem and on to Townhouse Square. The electric cars were first placed in service on July 3rd, 1897, replacing the horse-drawn cars that had been traveling those same tracks since 1886. Now, after 40 years of faithful service, the electric cars too were being replaced. The next morning, a fleet of 12 brand new buses would take over the route. The old trolleys were eventually shipped to South America where the tracks were torn up. Another willing customer was found for the scrap steel, Japan. That old orange and black streetcar, with its number painted on the side, has been gone for 40 years now. But those of us who rode on it as it clanked its way through the town, swaying from side to side, with the sound of its pipey bell ringing in our ears, it seems as if we took our last ride only yesterday. Uh, and as we said, this appeared in the Beverly Times, uh, uh, January 24, 1977, written by Lester Levy. Uh, and it was a fine account of that very historic ride and the picture here that we're looking at mm -hmm. of this uh, vehicle. One of the gentlemen's name that you read, uh, Henry Gaudreau, was my uncle. Oh, really? Yep. So I'm was a pr touch. proud to say that uh, we were represented on uh -huh. this historic night. Uh, and uh, some of the other names, uh, Ed Foley and Jackie Lyons, they're all familiar names, mm -hmm. I'm sure, to our viewers. So we come to an end, Rich, of... Uh, of a wonderful series of pictures here. Thus, our fourth uh, program has uh, concluded. And uh, what's in store now as we look ahead? Well, as I say, tonight I think we've pretty much wound up the North Beverly uh, area. And uh, even though we still certainly want to encourage people to come forward if they have North Beverly pictures. And next time we're going to be taking a look, strangely enough, at trolley cars yeah. uh, in the Beverly area. 
you had mentioned that we have really uh, many, many photographs of the cars, and this was a great came as a great surprise to me. I didn't realize that there were that mm -hmm. many photographs mm -hmm. that were taken of the old cars. But yep, there are, and uh, we'll see them all in our next program. We'll try. Okay, thanks for coming on. Thank you. It's always fun to have you with us, Rich. It's fun to be here. Past. And uh, this is this is Ed Joseph's, uh, hoping that you've enjoyed this program, and uh, we'll be back with you uh, as soon as we can. So for now. Good night.